Hello everyone and welcome to The Orbit. This is an aerospace company founded in 2011. I am Eleonora and this is Matteo. Hello guys. And we will take you to the tour today. So let's start from here. We are at the moment in our headquarters close to the Como Lake in the Lombardy region. The Lombardy region has been one of the regions may mostly impacted by the coronavirus outbreak. This is why you can see that the facility is almost empty. But usually this is not at all like this. So there are about 80 people working. Here the team is about 60 and then we have another facility in Portugal and another in the UK. But well, what does the Orbit do? So we provide satellite hardware, innovative launch services solution, operation for nano to micro satellites, satellite and on-ground software solutions, and analog strategies. But today we are going to focus on our in-orbit now launch service. Let's begin! Here we are in our prototyping room. Here we meet Luca, our system engineer, who will get us through all the features that compose our deployers and our launch services. Hello guys! Here is where we develop manufactured chipset deployer able to host from 1U to 16U nano satellites. Our deeper family is capable to deploy up to 6U or 8U chipset for a combination of smaller satellites. The one I'm showing you right now is the extended version of our deployer able to host the 3U chipset bigger than the standards with a lateral protrusion up to 16mm. The electronics here in the bottom of the tube drives the power from the launch vehicle to an actuator and allow to open the door. Then, a spring release the payload at the customizable velocities. The same mechanism is applied to the D-Cube family, which starting from the next year will be commercially available. The D-Cube can host up to 12U or 16U chipset and combination of smaller satellites. The D-Cube dispenser have a lateral allowances up to 20mm and a dedicated, dedicated umbilical connection to the hosted satellites. d and d -cubes are designed to be compatible with all the launch vehicles as a standalone products or integrate, integrated in this plate here as a part of our satellite carrier named ION. Every satellite needs to be in a particular orbital position to do its job. This is even more important for satellite constellation, where you have a series of satellites working together to provide a global service. Smaller satellites usually doesn't have propulsion, so it takes a long time to them to get where they need. That's why we decided to build our ION satellite carrier which is able, thanks to its own propulsion, to bring and release each satellite to its precise orbital slot. So our first platform is ready, integrated into the Vega SSMS POCO in the French Guiana. But unfortunately, the coronavirus outbreak led to the closing of the launch site. And this, of course, on to a delay of the of the launch date. But uh, we are confident that uh, w this will be very soon. We hope so. And uh, so we are waiting for the confirmation of the launch date. This is a short time lapse of the assembly of our first ion. First, we assemble the upper plate and the cross plate to form the inner part of the structure. We then assemble the 16D pods on the upper plate and perform functional testing of each D pod. Afterwards, we assemble the lateral panels and the lotus, which is the mechanical interface of the satellite with the launcher and with the test facility. We then rotate the satellite upside down to allow the integration of the harness while we assemble the dummy models of the avionics unit on the lower plane. We complete the harness integration by assembling the lower plate with the dummies on the Lotus and assemble the side panels that will support the solar panels, reaching the final configuration. Finally, the model is equipped with a mechanical stand needed for the shipment to the test facility and rotated for shipment. On this first IO mission, called Origin, we are going to perform a fast dispersion of the 12 satellites from planet on the injection orbit of the launch vehicle, sensitively reducing their time to business compared to standard deployment. Then we will perform an orbit demonstration mission of the onboard propulsion module. Here we are again! While our first ion satellite carrier is ready to go on the launch pad, we are already working on our next mission scheduled for next December. This second platform will have enhanced capabilities, allowing us to precisely deploy our customer satellite exactly where they need to be. So you mentioned enhanced. With enhanced, we mean 
that now the propulsion that we have on board, that it's much more than the one that we had on our first flight, will, will be commercially available to our customers. So now we can perform a lot of maneuvers like uh, run shift, uh, correction of inclination, true anomaly phasing, an orbit race, an orbit race or lowering, and then how we do it uh, using our propulsion that is a chemical bipropellant uh, green propulsion. This means uh, that uh, we can perform the maneuver faster, faster down to one hour of run shift uh, in one month. We are now ready to enter the clean room where our CTO Lorenzo is going to show us all the elements of the iron that will fly in December this year. Let's go! Welcome in our clean room. Here with me we have our second iron that we fly in December. It just started its path towards the space. Uh, this specifically is the main structure. As you can see it's fully made of carbon composites. It's quite a big guy, it's quite a big guy. So you have all the platform section on the bottom here that will be integrated with this um, MGSC and on top of it, the payload section where you can fit your D-pods, D-cubes, microsatellites, whatever you want to carry to space. Um, we have several stations here now in the ion integration um, station uh, where we can actually assembly and integrate several satellites at a time in order to meet demand and um, while all the avionics is actually integrated again by our team in the other section of the queue. Let's come and see. And here we are in our avionics integration station. Here with me there is the heart of our iron, so the avionics unit. Uh, as you can see, most of the cargo that is part of this avionic unit is internally made. Actually, as we were tested in the other half of our wheel room. And um, as you can see, we have here our main homework computer, the ADCS subsystem, the combustion control, the B-cube uh, deployment system, our interface with the payload, the, our distance, which is a uh, multi-purpose uh, attitude determination sensor suite that we have in this test version that we have here on the bench, uh, the hold down and release mechanism control here that we already mentioned, and here what we do is uh, the AAT set of the avionics, so both the electronic units that composes the uh, brain, the heart, the muscles of our IM, uh, before enclosing them in the boxes. The, to be carried and then integrated on top of the structure that we have already seen. As last stop of our tour, I'm glad to show you our control room. From here, we are able to operate our iron through our software called Aurora. But let's leave the floor to Bruno, our expert on the matter. The Orbit developed Aurora to control iron, uh, and we can do so remotely uh, from anywhere in the world. Uh, Aurora is a cloud-based uh, software that manages the ground network, the antenna, the ground stations, as well as the control of the actual satellites. Um, we partner with ground station providers such as LeafSpace, Amazon Ground Station and others to provide global connectivity to our customers. Um, we want to foster a marketplace where Aurora serves as the underlying software infrastructure. Uh, you can connect your own antenna and make the spare capacity available to third parties, allowing you to monetize your infrastructure in a sort of uh, uh, Airbnb of ground stations. Um, you can develop and make available your own software components, maximizing the return of your development. Aurora puts um, control of your mission in your pocket. Yeah, you can access it through your smartphone or your tablet. Um, with Aurora, you don't need to uh, invest in hardware or expensive software developments. You pay per use. Um, and being deployed on the cloud, uh, Aurora can run uh, on infrastructure that hosts our data sets, thus enabling faster time to market of the analytics. Uh, as the data that is downloaded from satellites straight into your processing environment. Here we are. The tour is over and we're back home. We hope you find it interesting and to meet you up in person soon. 
Yes, yeah, so looking forward to meeting you in the future at the orbit or wherever in the world. But please, in the meanwhile, stay in touch and don't hesitate to contact us for any question you might have. Bye. Thank you. Bye.